let's uh, continue. We were uh, dealing with entry number three in our uh, elimination entries. Uh, elimination and adjusting entries in the case of uh, our uh, partial goodwill under the equity method. Next, we go to uh, elimination entry number four. Number four, we debit to investment income, 34,440. Debit investment income thirty four thousand four hundred forty. Debit non controlling interest seven thousand two hundred. Debit non controlling interest seven thousand two hundred. Credit dividends uh, of S no dividends. Third six thousand credit and credit investment in S company five thousand six hundred forty. I'll repeat the entry debit investment income thirty four thousand four hundred forty debit non controlling interest seven thousand two hundred credit dividends third six thousand. Uh, dividends of S, thirty-six thousand credit and credit investment in S company for five thousand six hundred forty. Now the explanation is to eliminate intercompany dividends and investment income under the equity method. Under the equity method and establish share of dividends and establish share of dividends repeat to eliminate intercompany dividends and investment income under the equity method and establish share dividends now what how do we compute the debit to investment income the debit to investment income is the difference between 48,000 and 13,560. The difference between 48,000 and 13,560. How did we find 48,000? 48,000 is taken by multiplying 80% times 60,000. So 80% times 60,000 equals 48,000. And minus 13,560. How did we find 13,560? 13,200 times 80%, 13,200 times 80% equals 10,560, 10,560 plus 3,000, 10,560 plus 3,000. 3,000 is the difference between 3,750 and 750. Okay, so I'll repeat the computation of 34,440. That's the debit to investment income. Okay, 80% times 60,000. 80% times 60,000. Uh, no? 80% times 60,000. Minus, minus 13,560. 13,560. So you get 34,440. 
How did we find 13, 5, 60? Is the result to multiplying 13,200 times 80% minus 3,750 minus 750 or 10,560 minus or plus 3,000. I'll repeat. 80% times 60,000 minus 13,560. So you get 34,440. How did we get 13,560? So 13,200 times 80% equals 10,560 and add the difference between 3,750 and 750. So 10,560 plus 3,000 is 13,560. Okay? Then another debit is non-controlling interest for 7,200 taken by multiplying 36,000 by 20%. And how did we get 5,640? Uh, 5,640. Okay, how did you get that amount? Actually, that's your credit to your investment account. That's the credit balance of your investment account. So we have 48,000 48, minus 28,800 minus 28,800 and minus 13,560 and minus 13 560. So I'll repeat how 5,640 was arrived at. 48,000 minus 28,800 and minus 13,560. That gives us the balance of the investment in S company account and we close it to the investment account, okay? So we now go to the number five, elimination entry. The entry is debit, non-controlling interest in net income of subsidiary, debit, non-controlling interest in net income of subsidiary, Credit non-controlling interest. Credit non-controlling interest for 9,360. Entry again, number five. Debit non-controlling interest in net income of subsidiary. Credit non-controlling interest. The amount is 9,360. Okay? Now the explanation here is to establish non-controlling interest in subsidiaries net income. To establish non-controlling interest in subsidiaries net income. Okay? Now, Shall we continue with the journal entries as well as the elimination and adjusting entries in the books as of the year 20X5, still under the partial goodwill method of under the equity method? So let's now continue with 20X5, still under the partial goodwill method and under the equity method. Now, what are the entries in 20X5? Let's begin with the entries 
in 20x5. Number one is to debit cash and credit investment in S company. Debit cash and credit investment in S company for 38,400. 38,400. That's taken by multiplying 48,000 by 80 percent. 48,000 by 80 percent. Debit to cash, credit investment in is company for 38,400. Okay? Then, uh, on December 31, on December 31, we now have the first entry, debit, investment in S company, investment in S company for 72,000. Investment in S company for 72,000. Credit investment income. Can open a record. Debit. Investment in S company, 72,000. Credit investment income, 72,000. To record share in net income of subsidiary. To record share in net income of subsidiary. That's for the amount of 72,000. Taken by multiplying 80% times 90,000. 80% times 90,000. Okay? 80% times 90,000. Okay. The second entry on December 31 is to debit investment income. Investment income. 7,200 times 80 percent. 7,200 times 80 percent is equal to 5,760. 5,760. And credit investment in S company. Debit to investment income, credit investment in S company, multiplying 7,200 by 80%. So you get 5,760. To record amortization of allocated excess. To record amortization of allocated excess. Now we are still talking about the allocated excess of the assets and the liabilities. Now those are the entries on December 31, 20X5. And we go to the elimination entries. Elimination entries as they should be found in the consolidation work paper. Now, what are the elimination and adjusting entries? Entry one, debit common stock as company, debit common stock as company, 240,000. Debit retained earnings as company, 144. Thousand. Debit retained earnings of S company, 144,000. Credit investment in S company for 307,200. 307,200 is taken by multiplying 384,000 times 80%. 384,000 times 80%. Then we also credit non-controlling interest, 
76,800. 76,800. I'll repeat the entry number one. Debit common stock is company 240,000. Debit retained earnings 144,000. Credit investment in S company 307,200. And credit non controlling interest for 76,800. Second entry, debit accumulated depreciation of equipment, 96,000 minus 12,000, 84,000. So 96 minus 12, 84. Debit accumulated depreciation buildings, 192 plus 6. So you debit to accumulated depreciation buildings by 198,000. Debit plan 7,200. Debit discount on bonds payable 3,600. Debit goodwill 12,000 minus 3,000 or 9,000. Credit buildings, 216,000. Credit, non-controlling interest, 15,360. 15,360 was taken by deducting 90,000 minus 13,200 times 20 percent so 90,000 minus 13,200 times 20 percent equals 15,360 we also credit to uh, investment in s company for 70,000 440. 70,440. That's the balance of the investment account. Deb, uh, number two entry, I'll repeat. Entry two, debit accumulated depreciation equipment for 84,000. Debit accumulated depreciation buildings 198,000. Debit plan 7,200. Debit discount on bonds payable 3,600. Debit goodwill 9,000. Credit buildings 216,000. Credit non controlling interest 15,360. Credit investment in is company for 70,440. So you can draw your uh, investment uh, in S company account, uh, try to post the debits and the credits, and finally end up with the balance. So we now get entry number three, debit depreciation expense again. Debit accumulated depreciation of buildings, 6,000. Debit interest expense, 1,200. Debit, okay. Credit accumulated depreciation equipment by 12,000. And credit discount on bonds payable, 1,200. I'll repeat the entry. Debit depreciation expense, 6,000. Debit accumulated depreciation of buildings, 6,000. Debit interest expense, 1,200. Credit accumulated depreciation of the equipment and credit discount on Bonds payable, 
200. Entry number four. Debit investment income. Debit investment income. 66,240. 66,240. Debit non-controlling interest. 9,600. It's taken by multiplying 48,000 times 20%. Credit dividends is 48,000. Credit investment in S company, 27,840. 27,840. I'll repeat the entry for debit investment income. 66,240 debit non controlling interest 9,600 credit dividends 48,000 credit investment in S company 27,840. The explanation is to eliminate intercompany dividends, to eliminate intercompany dividends and investment income under the equity method and to establish share dividends. And to establish share dividends. Now we go to the last uh, entry for partial uh, goodwill year 2005. The entry is the last entry or number five. Debit, non-controlling interest in net income of S, non-controlling interest in net income of S, 16,560. Non-controlling interest in net income of S, 16,560. And credit to non-controlling interest, 16,000. 560. Now the amount is taken as follows. Net income of subsidiary 90,000 less amortization of allocated excess in entry number three. Less amortization of allocated excess 7,200. So the difference is 82,800, then we multiply it by 20%. Multiply it by 20%. So we get the non-controlling interest in net income. Non-controlling interest in net income. 16,560. 16,000. 560. Now we are through with the uh, partial goodwill. We now continue with full goodwill under the equity method. Full goodwill uh, on the first year under the equity method. We have the following entries. January 1, 20 X4. Debit investment in S company, 372,000. 372,000 credit to cash. Then on December 31, 20X4, entry one, debit to cash. Credit investment in S company, 28,800. Most of these computations were also in our partial goodwill. So debit entry number one, December 31, 20X4. Debit to cash, credit investment in S company, 28,800. Then uh, for entry number two, on the same date, Debit to investment in S company, credit to investment income for 48,000. Debit to investment in S company, 
credit to investment income for 48,000. Again, taken by multiplying 60,000 times 80%. Then entry number three, debit investment income for 13,560 investment income, 13,560 and credit to investment in S company. Credit to investment in S company. Now those are the entries that we have in the year 20X4 up to the end of the year. So we have now your uh, entries. Then we go to the uh, full goodwill under the first year and under the equity method. We have the following elimination and adjusting entries. Most of these are similar to those of the partial goodwill. So entry number one, Debit to common stock is company, 240. Debit to retained earnings is company, 120. Credit to investment in is company, 288. Credit non-controlling interest, 22. Okay, so I'll repeat. Debit common stock is company, 240. Debit retained earnings, 120. Credit investment in S company, 288. Credit non control rest for 72. Then the second elimination entry is to debit inventory, 6,000. Debit accumulated depreciation equipment, 96,000. And uh, debit Accumulated depreciation buildings, 192,000. Debit land, 7,200. Debit discount on bonds payable, 4,800. And debit to goodwill, 15,000. So those are the debits. I'll repeat the debits. Okay, debit inventory, six. Accumulated depreciation equipment, nine, six. Accumulated depreciation building, 192. Debit land, 7,200. Debit discount on bonds payable, 4,800. Debit goodwill, 15,000. Now we are now on full goodwill basis. Credit to buildings. 216,000 credit non controlling interest for 21,000. How did we get 21,000? The credit to non controlling interest of 21,000 was derived at by multiplying 90,000 times 20%, 90,000 times 20% plus 15,000 minus 12,000 plus 15,000 plus 12 uh, minus 12,000. So non-controlling interest, 90,000 times 20% plus 15,000 we deduct 12,000, the partial goodwill. So we now get the credit of 21,000. And credit to investment in S company for 84,000. Now please try to prove the quality of the debits and the credits since we involve a journal entry. Then we go to elimination entry number three. Debit cost of goods sold, 6,000. Debit depreciation expense, 6,000. Debit accumulated depreciation buildings, 6,000. Debit interest expense, 1,200. 
Debit, goodwill, impairment, loss. Goodwill, impairment, loss. 3,750. Again, the debits, cost of goods sold, six. Depreciation expense, six. Accumulated depreciation building, six. Interest expense, 1,200. Debit, goodwill, impairment, loss. 3750 credits are inventory 6000 accumulated depreciation equipment 12000 credit discount on bonds payable 1200 and credit goodwill 3750 now we go to elimination entry number 4 debit to investment income Thirty seven thousand four hundred forty debit to investment income thirty seven thousand four hundred forty debit to non controlling interest seven thousand two hundred non controlling interest seven thousand two hundred credit dividends S dividends third six thousand credit investment in s company eight thousand six hundred forty repeat debit to investment income third seven four forty debit non-controlling interest seven thousand two hundred credit dividends s third six thousand credit investment in s company 8,640. Okay, now those are the entries that uh, we have for the last entry is number five. Debit, non-controlling interest in net income of subsidiary, non-controlling interest in net income of subsidiary, 8,610. Non-controlling interest in net income of subsidiary, 8,610 credit to non-controlling interest. Non-controlling interest in net income of subsidiary, 8,610 credit non-controlling interest. So those are the entries. In uh, the year 2000, X4, in under the full goodwill basis and under the equity method. So let's finally go to the last year, uh, the second year, under the full goodwill basis and under the equity method. We again start with the year 20X5. Okay, in the year 20X5, at the end of the year, 20X5, December 31, 20X5. Now, what are your entries at the end of the year, 20X5? Okay, at uh, the end of the year, 20X5, with regards to our... Uh, entry in order to recognize. Okay, number one is debit to cash. Number one is debit to cash, thirty-eight thousand four hundred credit investment in S company. Debit to cash, thirty-eight thousand four hundred credit to investment in S company. Multiplying 48,000 times 80%. Second entry, debit investment in S company, 72,000 and credit investment income. 72,000 was taken by multiplying 90,000 times 80%. The third entry is so debit investment income. 7,200 times 80% is 5,760. Credit investment in 
as company. So debit investment income, 5,760. Credit investment in as company. Now, the amortization of the allocated excess. Now, we go to the elimination entries uh, in uh, 20x5 under the full goodwill basis uh, equity method. Entry 1, debit common stock S, uh, company, 240,000. Debit retained earnings, 144,000. Credit investment in S company, 384,000 times 80%. Credit investment in S company, 384,000 times 80% equals 307,200. 307,200. Credit, non-controlling interest, 76,800. That's 20%. 76,800. Okay, we are eliminating uh, the investment account balance and the equity accounts. And we are establishing non-controlling interest. Second entry, debit accumulated depreciation, debit accumulated depreciation equipment for 96,000 minus 12,000 is 84,000. Accumulated depreciation equipment, 84,000 debit. Debit accumulated depreciation building, 198,000. That's 192 